Hi, welcome to this talk around validating network high availability with Batfish. So a bit about myself, um, I'm Rick Donato, I work as a senior network automation engineer at Network to Code, and previously worked within the NFE and SDN space, as well as the network security space. Uh, and you can find me over at Twitter, at Rick J. Don, avid blogger over at Network to Code blog, and also my own blog, packetflow.co.uk. And also you can find uh, much of my code over at the GitHub repo shown below. So about this talk and about you, this talk is going to be about validating high availability using flow based verification via the tool Batfish. We're going to take an example topology. We're going to deactivate uh, different nodes and different links, and then we're going to check flows across that network. So. To do this, we're going to use Batfish features such as snapshot forking and differential reachability. We're going to also then do a code walkthrough and then also perform a demo. So a bit about yourself. This is for people that have got a good knowledge of Python, good knowledge of and experience of Batfish. And also for network engineers and network automation engineers that want to learn more about the verification that Batfish can provide to their networks. So the why, so you know, HA verification is massively important. We want to be able to ensure that the network is designed to handle, you know, different node and link failures. But also we want to, we want to know that the network is actually built based on this design to handle these node and link failures. And really all of that comes down to the, the key goal that business service is not affected at the point of of failure so it does raise the question of well can i just not use configuration based verification and that question is is a, is a really good one so you know configuration based testing we can see that as unit tests upon our network so this is they're great but it's hard to find all cases and all different use cases and to define logic and tests for certain behavior can be extremely difficult and, and sometimes not even possible. And this is where flow-based verification comes in. Flow-based verification can be thought of as your integration tests on your network. And this is to catch those edge cases that your unit tests or your configuration tests don't cover. And, and really the, the key point here is that your flow-based verification tests, your integration tests, are really there to complement your unit tests. So like in the software world, you know, we don't have one or the other unit or integration tests. We have, we really use both of them to complement each other um, to ensure that we can get the maximum test coverage and to um, detect as many failures in, in, in many different use cases as, as, as possible. So a real quick overview of Batfish. So Batfish is an open source tool runs as a containerized service. Um, it's built by the guys at IntentionNet. So yeah, it runs as a containerized service. Uh, we take our, our conf configurations from our, our network. We, we bundle that into a, a what's known as a snapshot. We ingest that into uh, the Batfish service. And then Batfish builds a number of models which are vendor agnostic and that we can then query using a set of questions. So we can query those, those models and, and get from it not only configuration details about our network, but also can play, uh, control plane details. So, what does the uh, what does the BGP sessions look like? What are our um, our OSPF uh, neighbourships? Are they are they formed? What do they look like? So, yeah, a whole bunch of of questions there, and those those questions are asked via typically the Python and Batfish module Pi Batfish. And also there's an Ansible role, which utilizes that Pi Batfish as well. Both, uh, both Pi Batfish and the Ansible role, role both uh, utilize that, the underlying REST API, which the, the Batfish service exposes. So here, I mean, this is literally just a glimmer of what Batfish does and can do. And if you want to um, learn more about the capabilities of Batfish outside of this and also what this talk is going to be about, then go to that link there um, within the, uh, the Batfish uh, GitHub 
to get more details. And also with uh, to get for a good source of resources, if you go to the Batfish website, there's a whole load of uh, tutorials, guides, blog post links, uh, video tutorials, um, a whole ton of stuff. So it's highly recommended to, to check that site out as well. So our topology that we're going to be working with today is a traditional three-tier topology. Um, we've got we've got an OSPF uh, backbone there within our, our core. We've got our aggregation. We've got uh, our aggregation switches within a VPC domain presenting our L2 L3 boundary um, slash SVIs, and we've got our L2 domains um, down there, uh, which. We've got our different vendor switches. Uh, we've got the uh, the Arista, the Cisco, and the, the Juniper QFX. Uh, so each of those switches are, are going up to that aggregation layer just using port channels um, and standard VLANs. Um, so all quite quite simple and, and straightforward stuff there. So going back to what we're going to be doing today is we're going to take this topology and what we want to be able to do is I want to be able to, to deactivate different links and different nodes within that network and check that traffic from any point within that topology can still get to my server. So, and those, those flows are still gonna, still gonna work. Um, so to, to be able to kind of get that confidence that if there's any issue, then we've got high availability and, and the flows are gonna be good and there's not gonna be any service interruption. So the way that we're going to do this is, is shown here. So we're going to first um, start by creating a Batfish session. We're going to cre create that snapshot um, that we were speaking about a second ago. The, the, the key slightly different thing that you might have uh, not seen before is around using a layer one topology file, which we're going to, we're going to shortly cover. Once we've got that uh, base snapshot, we're then going to create a failure snapshot um, by using um, fork snapshotting. Again, we're going to talk about this in more detail shortly. And then once we've got these uh, two snapshots, the, the base and the failure snapshot, we're then going to run that through our differential reachability question and to output any flows that um, are, are, not, uh, are not working or are different between our base and, and, and failure snapshots. So we've got our layer one topology file that we'll first look at. Um, so with Batfish, Batfish construct, constructs, it's layer three topologies based on addresses. So, and with this, there are some problematic cases where this the Batfish cannot construct the whole topology um, due to this. So for example, so we might have IP addresses that are reused across multiple segments. So again, we need to be able to tell um, Batfish how to, how we need to give it some more information to be able to understand that topology slightly better. Um, so we've got IP addresses reused across the multiple segments within the network, but also we've got layer two segments. So obviously there's no IP addresses uh, within those layer two segments and those, um, those L2 links. So we need to be able to then again, yeah, tell, tell Batfish what that topology looks like and to do that we use something called the layer one topology file and this is a json file that we add to our snapshot that consists of the uh, the actual layer one links between two nodes so you can see that there within the json file we have um, for each each part we've got the the node one and node two we've got its host name and we've got the interface name and what it does is it uses that information and it combines that with the information that it has with, uh, for layer three to build out a fuller picture um, with, for the topology. So this now allows us to, um, to, for when we're using and sending our flows across the network, to get that flow um, across those layer two segments and, and to get Batfish to, to do that um, validation on, on that part as well. So snapshot forking. So with some snapshot forking, what this does is 
it takes it takes a sna snapshot and it copies the snapshot and within the copy of the snapshot you can define a parameter that you can alter so that parameter can be whether an interface is down or up um, or is deactivated or reactivated whether a the a node is deactivated or, or be it reactivated and whether um, you know files are, of the snapshot are included or or not and then once you've you've created that copy um, you've now got a new snapshot a failure snapshot if you like in our case that you can use for um, differential based questions so questions that take in a base snapshot aka your working network and a failure snapshot um, to, to be able to compare compare the differences to be able to kind of give you those those answers so yeah so in our case we're going to be using the fork snapshot to deactivate nodes and deactivate interfaces within our topology so we can then have uh, these uh, a whole ton of different failure snapshots with these with, with these failed links that we can compare against our original good known um, base snapshot so now we have the the differential reachability question now so this, this is a question that we're going to be using today, and this question takes two snapshots. So it takes that base snapshot and also um, the additional snapshot that we, we would have created, typically via the, the, the snapshot forking that we just saw. So it takes a good snapshot and then that, that failed snapshot of either, uh, in our case, a node being down or a link being down. And when I say down, actually, Removed, deactivated from from that snapshot. So, if you look at the output here, so that the the key thing with the uh, this question is that it returns flows that are successful in one snapshot but not the other. So here you can see we've got. So this is the output that we we get. So in this case, this is um, a flow that's been successful in one snapshot but not the other. So We've got the flow from the, the left-hand side. We've got, you know, the flow started on core one. It started from that interface, that ether one slash two. And that you can see the IP addresses that it's coming from and also that, that IP that it's going to on that, pro like, so ICMP, so that's all good. So we've got that flow. So here we've got that it's, it's been successful within our reference, our base snapshot. but Within our snapshot, uh, our additional snapshot that we provided it, it's not been successful. So there's, for whatever reason, no route has been found on core one. So it's not been able to send that traffic on. So, so yes, yeah, so that's that's the key thing with the uh, with this question, and with this question, it also takes a number of other inputs. So it takes. All of these inputs that you've got here, so you can define with with this with the flows that you're telling it to check. You can tell it to start from what whatever location, whether you want to transit this flow via a certain location. Um, you can tell it, you know, the source IPs, destination, different ports, different applications, protocols, even packet lengths and TCP flags. Um, you've also got some other options there. Which I won't won't fully go into, but the the other thing to mention is that with this question and with the flow that it checks, when you don't provide, so in our case we're going to be saying check flows going to our our servers, so the three IP addresses of our our three servers, and what this is going to do, this is actually going to check all flows. So I mean all flows from all the L3 points of our topology on all ports and all pro protocols. And it will return any issues on any of the ports and, or any of the protocols that, is, um, that are not successful. So yeah, m massively, massively powerful. So now we've got our elements of what the, the, the key components of what we're going to need to be able to build up the script, to be able to build up this uh, this check-in. 
let's have a look at the uh, the code walkthrough. So this is a, a slightly evolved diagram of what, what I showed you earlier. So we've got that Batfish, Batfish session that we're going to create, we're creating our base snapshot and with that L3 topology to kind of give us that, that additional color of the, uh, the, L, the L2 domain. But what we're going to do in the next step is we're going to iterate over each of the um, each of the parts of the network, such as we're going to iterate over the nodes, the, the port channel members, and also the L3 interfaces. So for each iteration, we're going to fork the snapshot using the base snapshot. We're going to create a failure snapshot. We're going to then run the uh, compare reachability using the base and that, and that new failure snapshot. If there's any issues in, or any differences within those flows, between those two snapshots, we're gonna display. If not, we're gonna carry on with our iteration. And once the iteration loop's done for the one part, the nodes or the L3 interfaces, we're then gonna move on to the next. So let's, uh, let's look at the code. Okay. So if you look to the left, we've got, we've got our snapshot here. So just a folder, just a folder with our configs in for our devices, our hosts. So details of the IP address, just a, a bit of JSON here with uh, what the IP address and the, um, the interface name is for our host or hosts and, uh, and yeah, our configs and also our layer one topology file. And now our L1 topology file, in our case, what we're doing is we're actually only adding in the links which are L2 links. So we're not adding in our L3 links because Batfish is already doing a, a, the, the good job of, of bringing that in and building topology using those, those L3 links. So yeah, just the L2 links here. So if we have a look at our script, so we start off, we do our imports, um, everything we need to do. We've got a number of functions here, which I'll dive into in a minute. We've got a, um, a bit of uh, bit of code here to be able to kind of bring in some of those attributes via the uh, CLI to make it a little bit easier to run. And then here we've got we define some of the uh, some of the attributes and scopes that we're we're going to use. So. When I say we're going to use, that we're going to use within our um, our differential reachability, and also pulling out pulling out our links, which um, which I'll show you in a minute. It'd be easy to show you the the code. We load our questions. We create our base snapshot here, which is going to be the same base snapshot across everything we do. And then, really, this is the, um, the this is the heart of it. So, first of all, we just we print out just for some clarity, the settings that we're going to be using. And now we run our tests. So we're going to deactivate all the port, port channel members first and deactivate the R3 interfaces. And we're going to deactivate our, our nodes. So when I say deactivate, as, as we showed before, we're going to, we're going to fork the snapshot. We're going to deactivate that interface. We're going to check the flows. Then we're going to, th we're going to throw away that that failure snapshot, and then we're going to go on to the next interface, create a new failure snapshot. So, um, so yeah, it's not like we're deactivating a whole load of interfaces all at once. We're literally just one interface at a time, one node at a time. So, if we have a look at these, if we have a look at these uh, these functions, so we look at deactivate nodes. So we use this Batfish question here to pull out all the, all of the nodes using that variable I showed you a minute ago around the, the node scope up here, uh, down here, where is it? This is gonna define what we, uh, what nodes we pull out from this question. And then we, for, for, for those of you that don't know, um, the answer, this part here, this method, that, that just takes the answer and wraps it within JSON and the frame then wraps that um, the, the that question into a, a pandas data frame. So once we've got these our notes, we then loop over them. 
each time we fork the snapshot. And within our fork, we deactivate the node, which we've got within our loop. And now we've got our fork snapshot. We then print, well, two things. We print the results of our, um, our differential reachability. So that our differential reachability here is that question that I showed you a minute ago. Um, the only header constraints we've got in here is, is those destination IPs of, as you can see, the, um, our end hosts, our servers. And here we're defining the, the base snapshot, our base snapshot here, and the snapshot that we've created from our fork. And then we're returning our answer. And then we're returning that answer into our pretty printing of the results. And our print, pretty printing of the results is going to, <clears throat> if there's any more than one flow, then there's an issue. And we're going to pass it over to our Prettify, uh, this function here, which is within Prettify, or we're going to carry on and uh, create a, um, a success mark. So the, the piece here with the pretty printing, to get it into nice tables and to lovely colors. Um, this is where I've used the, uh, the rich Python, not to go too far off at a tangent, but the, uh, the Python rich um, uh, module, which is, uh, which is amazing, which is really, really good. I highly recommend checking it out. Um, so yeah, we do, I won't go into all of this, but we, we, we print that out in a nice way. So, um, so yeah, so we've got that for the nodes, for the deactivating of the nodes, um, and, and there's the same kind of logic here for the, the members. So first of all, we pull out the members, we create, have them as a list. We've got our scope, using that variable. Um, we pull out the properties, so we only want to pull out the, um, the group channels, and then we drop um, anything within a group channel here, and then we, um, anything that's not got a group channel, then or it's not part of a group channel, we, we drop. So we are then left with, and we, we provide the, um, we put in the interface here to get the interface name. So we, we're we literally just saying anything that's in a group channel, tell me the interface name. And then we've got a, a nice list. And then we loop over that, doing the same thing as we did before, forking that snapshot. But in this case, we're deactivating the, uh, the, port, the port channel member for each time. And then the, the, the same, same logic here within the um, deactivating of the L3 interfaces. Um, but we just used a different question to get those L3 interfaces. Um, and, and yeah, so that's, that's that. So that's the, uh, that's the code. I hope that all makes, uh, makes sense. Um, so with that, let's, let's actually run the tool and uh, see how we get on. So here we've got those, those scopes that we were talking about before, what we're checking, um, what we're checking for, for the different L3 links. And we're just going through each of the, the channel members to start off with. So everything's looking good. And now we're moving on to the L3 links, but there's an issue. So let's have a look at, um, Let's have a look at the output. So it's deactivated the link on AGA2, um, which is this link here. So if we have a look, so within our original snapshot, we've got um, the flows actually taken two parts, so two traces. So the first originally it, it passed, so it went from core two, down to Agatha, two and that, that passed. But the within the base snapshot, this the first one, um, the within the base snapshot, that the, the flow went through uh, Aga two, but it went to um, Aga one. But even within the base snapshot, that the traffic was actually being uh, denied due to an ACL, which uh, which is which is not good. So within the snapshot that we've just provided our failure snapshot we can see that the traffic is just denied well 
Traffic's tried to make it down to Aga One, which, as per before, it's not been able to. It's not been able to do. But um, but obviously we've not we've not been able to get down to Aga Two via ETH One slash Four because this is the interface that we've we've deactivated. So. And also there's something else which is also great to see. And that's the, the fact that we've come from, so we've come from um, within the flow details, the flow that's failed is TCP port 80. So this goes back to the fact that it's gonna check all flows. Um, so if we have a look within our, um, if we have a look within our config, I'll tell you what, first of all, let me show you a quick diagram just to make things slightly, um, slightly clearer. So within our failure, so originally traffic was going down to um, AGA1 and it was failing, but traffic was still getting down to AGA2 um, without any issues because we had the OSPF uh, ECMP um, within our rib. So that was all good. But at the point that we took down this orange link, then traffic wasn't able to get down to to Aga One. Now, I think this is interesting because you know within the rib that those routes would still be up. You'd still have those ECMP routes up. It's only for the ACL dropping the traffic that that would cause the issue. So from from a routing and OSPF standpoint, you know things are still things are still good. But if we have a look. Um, if we have a look at what is actually in the config and causing the problem, which is on, uh, let's have a look, AGA1, we've got our ACL here. So it's permitting everything, but it's just denying traffic to that one, that one host, and which is what we've got here. So, what Batfish has, has, has done, it's gone through every single port for every single point of the network, and it's found that one port and that one host that flows can't get to. Now, to get that within a unit test or to write the logic for that would, would be pretty complex, right? Um, so to be able to have to parse um, all the different variations, but to be able to have to parse the ACLs on also all of the different platform vendors would, would be a headache, right? So, so this is yeah, massively, massively powerful. So yeah, um, really, really good and a great compliment to, to unit tests. So finally, so what else? So there's a, a real buzzing and great Batfish community out there um, that you can you can speak with and reach out to and, and join, both at the NTC Slack, uh, which you can see the link there on the Batfish channel. And also, also uh, you can reach the, the Batfish community over at the Batfish Slack, dedicated Batfish Slack that you, you can see there. Um, so the community is great, really buzzing, a load of great guys, always responsive, um, yeah, always happy to answer your questions. So I highly recommend um, reaching out, going in there, or even if you wanna just jump in there and, and, and give me a shout if you've got any questions about this, just, yeah, come on in. So also there's a Batfish Enterprise product. So if, um, if you wanna kind of look at what else Batfish can, can do for you and your business, then feel free to, to reach out to Network to Code or, or the guys at IntentionNet um, to, to further those discussions and be more than happy to. And also for all of the code for this demo, um, you can find that within, within, the, within the link provided there. So really, yeah, thanks for taking the time to uh, watch this today. I hope it's been useful. And, um, and then I hope, uh, I hope I've given you some insight in some of the things that um, Batfish can provide. And, and I hope that it can uh, help you with your automation journey. Thank you.